exponential objects in the category of graphs. We will adopt the following notation in this video and in subsequent videos. A representable will be denoted by an underline of the object of representation. So in the category of graphs, the Oneida embedding gives us two morphisms, underline S, underline T, from the representable of the vertex object, underline V, to the representable of the arc object, underline A. If W is the following graph, the product by the representables gives us two inclusions of vertices. First observe that the product of the representable of V and W is the graph with the same vertex set as W, but with no arcs, since the representable of V has no arcs. The graph of the product of the representable of A and W has the same arc set as W, which can be viewed as stretched out along the vertices of the representable of A into two columns. The morphisms underline S cross W and underline T cross W are the inclusions of A, B, C into the appropriate column. Recall that the arc set of the exponential Z to the W is the set of morphisms from underline A cross W to Z and the set of vertices is a set of morphisms from underline V cross W to Z with the right actions given by pre-composition by underline S cross W and underline T cross W. For example, let W be an isomorphic copy of the representable of A. Then underline A cross W is the following graph. Pre-composition by the following morphisms will give us the source and target boundaries. So if Z is another isomorphic copy of the representable of A, we see there are four morphisms from underline A cross W to Z, where A sub S and B sub T must be mapped to 0 and 1 respectively, while we are free to map B sub S and A sub T to either 0 or 1. Therefore, there are four arcs in the exponential object. Since there are also four morphisms from underline V cross W to Z, there are four vertices as well, given by pairs of Z vertices, where A and B respectively are sent. Notice that the source boundary of the exponent gives us the first two columns here, and the target boundary gives us the last two columns here. So the arc representing the first morphism has source at vertex 0, 0, and target at 0, 1. The second has source at 0, 0, and target at 1, 1. The third has source at 0, 1 and target at 0, 1, and the last has source at 0, 1 and target at 1, 1. The evaluation morphism on vertices is given by projection, so for example, 0, 0 and A is evaluated to 0, since that first coordinate corresponded to where that A vertex was sent. The evaluation at 0, 1 and B is evaluated to 1, the second projection since that corresponds to the B coordinate. On arcs, evaluation is trivial since every pair must be evaluated to the single arc in Z. Recall that the set of morphisms from W to Z is naturally isomorphic to the global elements of the exponential. The terminal object is a loop, hence the set of global elements of a graph is a set of loops in a graph. In this case, there is only one loop corresponding to the isomorphism from W to Z. Next, let W be the following graph with two vertices, A and B, and four arcs, which we will denote by different colors. Then underline A cross W is the following graph. Let Z be the graph with three vertices, 0, 1, and 2, and five arcs, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and omega. We leave it as an exercise to show that morphisms from graph B to graph C can be computed in sets as the coproduct indexed by maps between sets of vertices of the product indexed by pairs of vertices in B of the exponential C sub FB FB prime to the B sub B B prime, where B sub B B prime is defined to be the set of arcs alpha in B such that the source of alpha is B and the target of alpha is B prime. And similarly for C sub F B F B prime is the set of arcs beta in C such that the source of beta is F B and the target of beta is F B prime. Therefore the set of arcs in the exponential Z to the W 
is the coproduct indexed by pairs of maps between the vertex sets since the vertex set of underline A cross W is the binary coproduct of the vertex set of W. And so F can be represented by pairs of maps from the vertex set on W to the vertex set on Z. Following this coproduct, we have a product indexed by pairs of vertices in W of the exponent and sets of Z sub FW, FW prime, to the underline A cross W sub WS, W prime T, where W sub S is defined to be that vertex VSW, and W prime sub T is the vertex V sub T, W prime. Therefore, each graph morphism can be represented as a pair of maps from the vertex set on W to the vertex set on Z, and a collection of maps from the set underline A cross W sub WS W prime T to Z sub FW FW prime. Therefore, in order to calculate the set of arcs in Z to the W, we need to first find pairs of maps between the vertex set on W to Z, which we denote by F sub S bar F sub T, and we see that this is determined where A sub S, B sub S, and a sub t, b sub t are mapped to respectively. We also need to compute the possible lifts of these maps on vertices to set maps underline a cross w sub w s w prime t to z sub f w f w prime. In this case there are four maps g sub a a, g sub a b, g sub b a, and g sub b b. Note that there is a discrepancy in the notation here, since the subscripts on Z should have Fs before the W vertices. The set underline A cross W sub AA is empty, since there are no arcs from A sub S to A sub T in underline A cross W. There are two arcs, a red and a purple arc, from A sub S to B sub T in underline A cross W. There is one yellow arc from B sub S to A sub T, and there is one green arc from B sub S to B sub T, giving us the domains of our G maps. We can eliminate certain maps of F sub S, F sub T from consideration whenever it fails to extend to a morphism of graphs from underlying A cross W to Z. So we start with maps which send A sub S to zero. Note that since there is an arc from A sub S to B sub T, then B sub T must also be mapped to zero, since there is only one arc which has a source at zero, namely beta. Now B sub S can be sent to zero, which would then force A sub T to also be zero. Or we could send B sub S to one, and then A sub T could be mapped to either zero, one, or two, since each of these assignments are verified to lift to morphisms as well. Now what if A sub S is mapped to one? Then we can send B sub T, B sub S, and A sub T all to zero, since there is an arc alpha in Z from one to zero and a loop beta at zero. We could also send B sub T to one, which forces us to map B sub S to one. And then we are free to map A sub T to zero, one, or two. We could also map B sub T to two, B sub S to one, and A sub T to either zero, one, or two. That exhausts the possibilities for when a sub s is mapped to one. Notice that we are finished now since there are no assignments which send a sub s to two since the vertex at two does not have any arcs which have a source at two in z. So this first column gives us the index on the coproduct. We still need to compute the terms in the product. In the g sub a a column, the empty set is the initial object in the category of sets, hence there is exactly one map from it to z sub f a f a. The sets z sub f a f b, z sub f b f a, and z sub f b f b are all z sub 0 0 in this first row, and so are singleton sets. Therefore this row has ones across it. In fact each entry is easily seen to be one until we get to the entry at row 0 1 2 0 and g b a. In this case, Z sub F B F A is Z sub 1, 2, which is the set consisting of elements delta and omega. 
Therefore, this entry is 2. Also, the entry at 1121 and G sub B A is 2 as well. At 1102 G A B sub A B, there are 2 squared, or 4, maps. And 1102 G B B, there are 2 maps. At 1112 G sub A B, there are 4 maps. 1112 G sub B B, 2 maps. 1122 G sub AB, 4 maps. 1122 G sub BA, 2 maps. And 1122 G sub BB, 2 maps. So now we take the product across the rows, give us the number of arcs with source vertex F sub S and target vertex F sub T. In the first row, there is one arc, which is a loop at 0, 0. There's one arc each from 0, 1 to 0, 0 and 0, 1 to 1, 0. There are two arcs from 0, 1 to 2, 0, one arc from 1, 0 to 0, 0, one arc from 1, 1 to 0, 1, one arc from 1, 1 to 1, 1, two arcs from 1, 1 to 2, 1, eight arcs from 1, 1 to 0, 2, eight arcs from 1, 1 to 1, 2, and 16 arcs from 1, 1 to 2, 2. Therefore, there are 42 arcs in the graph z to the w. But notice that there are only two graph morphisms from w to z, corresponding to the loops at 0, 0 and 1, 1 in the exponential. The first morphism is the morphism which sends all arcs to the loop beta in z. The second morphism is that which maps all arcs to gamma in z. The point is that the exponential object has more structure than what may be suggested by the lack of morphisms between the objects. This is because exponential objects are defined by their universal mapping property internal to the category, and not by external considerations of HOM sets.